Hey everyone, this is Adam from Ads Productions with the review of the QNAP TS251A NAS drive. Before watching this video, it may be worth checking out my other two videos on the unboxing and the setup of this particular drive. Links for those are in the description. The design of this NAS is fairly typical. We have an overall white colour scheme here, with the only alternative being the strip with the buttons and inputs on the front. The contents included within the box are perfectly adequate and I didn't find myself looking for any spare parts. Short and simple, one NAS, a couple of components and some screws, job done. I do however think the drive bays could do with being more of a toolless design, because having a nice sleek high tech device using old technology like screws kind of takes the shine off just a little bit. I know it doesn't seem much but the feet on the NAS drive here are quite powerful and they stick to your desk. There were multiple times during this review where I was trying to slide the NAS left and right on a desk and it just stayed perfectly still, which is obviously a great thing if you've got spinning discs inside it. Connecting this NAS to a PC was extremely simple. There are a range of tools available to make sure you can connect it in the right way that suits you. With this NAS I really like how you can configure very advanced and specific details such as the network configuration and RAID array. Other NAS drives do let you do this, it just feels like the QNAP ones let you do it in more detail. Also with other NAS drives from different manufacturers, you have to wait until the device is initialized before you can change any of these or most of these components. Let's take a little look at the dashboard now. Obviously when you browse to the device, you're going to be greeted with a login screen. And in this case, they have gone above and beyond because in the background, you can see the stock photos. Now, these can be changed for other photos of your own personal ones. However, personally, I think this is a little bit too try hard for me. All you need is a login page because you're just going to put in your admin username, your admin password, and then you're in. There's not a real need here for it, but it's a nice touch. I'll give them that. There is a help desk app that comes as default with this NAS drive. This is really good because it helps you search their knowledge base if you've got any issues whatsoever here. You shouldn't do, but just in case, it's there for you. Backup station is where you can configure the backup, the replication, the cloud storage if you want to. As standard, this NAS wants to use the Amazon cloud services. However, you can configure it to use other services such as Microsoft Azure. File station is one of the integral apps on this device and allows you to see all the files and folders along with their respective parent folders. So you can see the entire structure to avoid any confusion and have it in a very categorical view. And obviously there is the control panel, the brain. You can change the settings, add users, configure security, change permissions, update the firmware, view the disk health. There's a whole range of things you can do here. I could make a whole 10 minute video on this. I'm not going to, but there's a lot there. Take a look for yourself. There is a very handy button at the top right of the device called the dashboard. This gives you an overview of the device, as well as storage quotas, hard disk health. For example, just by clicking on it, I can see that the system temperature is 31 degrees Celsius and one of the drives is showing as abnormal. Obviously I'm going to replace that disk then because the NAS has told me it's unhealthy. You can also set up mail alerts and all the other system admin stuff in the future but just know you've got a nice little dashboard button at the top right just to give you an overview. And along the top we have menus for changing profile passwords, viewing all of the system notifications, there's also a button for background activity as well as a search bar. The App Store is the life of the drive, allowing you to customize your device to your heart's content. Now there isn't actually a large amount of apps available on the store, however, you can be pretty damn certain that all the essentials are there. Whether you're looking for a multimedia solution, an antivirus, Microsoft Azure connectivity, it will all be there ready to go. The Quick Connect USB port on the front is very handy if you want to move data from the NAS to a USB stick or external hard drive, or if your name's Edward Snowden and you just want to steal secrets from it and put it on a USB to sneak it to a different country. It's completely up to you, I'm not going to judge you. You can actually hook this NAS up to a TV or monitor with the HDMI port, which is great if you're a tech guy trying to make a quick change on the NAS by hooking it up to a monitor just for a quick file transfer, quick permission change, you name it. A remote control. Not usually something you would associate with a NAS drive. It features a very nice design, similar to the Apple TV remote. But for some reason it takes a watch battery. Which I don't really understand, but hey, that's not a major problem. 
The remote is great because you can flick through files, folders, movies, etc. But I have to be honest, it's not the most responsive remote control in the world. There is an alternative to using the remote control if you don't want to. On the App Store, on both Android and iPhone, you can actually download a QNAP app that turns your phone into a remote control. In my opinion, this is far superior because included as part of this app features a mouse trackpad, multimedia buttons, on-screen keyboard, quick launch apps from the main menu, and much more. But please note that this too is far from perfect, and I found it to be quite buggy, because for example, sometimes it didn't allow me to delete text that I just entered, which is obviously a problem if you're prone to a spelling mistake like I am. It's not all doom and gloom though, I do find the remote to be very useful when browsing through your content on the media centers. This means you can just bring up any videos, any pictures, any audio clips, any application that you want to use directly on your TV, treating it more as a media console than a NAS drive, which is pretty cool if you ask me. The overall UI design when you connect the NAS drive to a TV using a HDMI cable is crystal clear. This allows for very easy navigation. This is a massive bonus. Also installing apps using this interface is very easy and there's absolutely no learning curve. It's just a couple of clicks and in no time you'll be installing apps, watching videos, listening to music on Spotify and all that stuff. You can also, as I mentioned, quick launch the apps using the QNAP remote control. There were instances, for example, where I found myself using the USB at the front of the NAS drive to connect my keyboard into just when it needed a bit more typing than I could be bothered to do on the iPhone. Overall then, this NAS drive is intended for home to small business use with its two drive bays, and it comes at a very, very reasonable price too. If you're in the market for a NAS drive, you have more than likely come across QNAP products before, as they are a well-known and high quality provider of these. So I'm sure if you pick one of these up, it will fit right into your specific needs and you'll be working away with no problems. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Adam from Ads Productions with the review of the QNAP TS 251A NAS drive.